2018's The Hate You Give Review and Thoughts. It is Black History Month, and we are going to talk about an, yeah, an important black movie. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. I will acknowledge some aspects are problematic. I'm going to try to explore them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this video will have some jokes, none at the expense of members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. If you're looking for a view that's like, oh, it's different from the original, so it sucks, whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. I will be talking about some of the differences. And I realize this video is long, I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I decide over the course of it to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. Until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead and choose to see me lower my index finger. As soon as in the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for movie and book as well, including discussing details of the ending. Now, um, I'm feeling some back pain coming on, so I might be talking fast throughout this video that is not meant as disrespect. This movie is rated PG-13, which makes a lot of sense. They clearly wanted for a lot of young people to, to watch it. You know, it's very important how you think about race when you're young. That can really set the stage for how you think about race later in life. So it makes a lot of sense. It does mean that, you know, and, and right, oh, this video will also be rated PG-13. The, the, the title comes from, you know, the, the yeah, the, you know, Tupac Shakur, said, the hate you give little infants F's everybody, thug life. And yeah, um, they, they say that several times in the movie. And yeah, a lot of the time they have to say F's instead of actually using the F word, which does take a little bit of the effect out of it. Now... You know, but it's the thing, if, if you use the F word too many times, you end up with an R rating, so. This is my first viewing. I just got done watching it right before I hit record on this video. So, the, the plot. When a young black man is shot at a routine traffic stop, his friend, high school student Star, who lives in a black neighborhood, but they have just enough money to send her to a white school, is traumatized, she seeks to develop her voice so she can speak out about what happened. And let's dive right into... Yeah, so the writing here is quite good. Um, most of the best stuff in this, in, in the script, is right from the, the book. And a lot of the, the, the stuff that doesn't work quite as well tends to be stuff they came up with for the movie. I'm, I swear, I'm not going to make this the whole video. It, you know how it goes. The book is better, the characters are deeper, the themes are better explored. You know, read the book, but in this case, the, the movie is also well worth watching. And, yeah, the, the book was written by Angie Thomas. You know, the, yeah, the, the book came out in 2017. And, yeah, Angie Thomas was, was 29, you know, at the time. So, you know, it's it's that thing of, you know, old enough to, to be a really, really talented writer. Not that, the, to be clear, there are some very young writers that are still, you know, absolutely incredible, but... Yeah, you know, has, you know, she has that, but also not so far removed from being a teenager that she's just forgotten what that's like. You know, the, the, yeah, um, let's see, so the, yeah, some of Star, the, the protagonist of the, the book and movie, is a lot like Angie Thomas herself. You know, so from Wikipedia, she was subjected to multiple instances of gun violence at a young age, 
When she was six years old, she witnessed a shootout. She grew up near the home of assassinated civil rights activist Medgar Everett, stating her mother heard the gunshot that killed him. And... Let's see... Yeah, and in her interview with The Guardian, she recounted how her mother took her to the library the following day to show her that there was more to the world than what Thomas saw the, the day of the shootout. This inspired her to take up writing. And... Let's see see that yeah um, and the the screenplay adaptation was written by Audrey Wells RIP and I have to admit I'm not really familiar with the rest like like I've heard of well, I think I watched George of the Jungle when I was a kid but I don't remember anything about it. yeah yeah that appears to be the only one I've, I've watched that she wrote, um, much less directed. I mean, I, I've heard some really good things about some of these, like the 2000 movie The Kid. Yeah, you know, the she does a really great job. There's there's certain decisions in the, the script where, the you know, the book is told entirely from a first-person perspective. Everything we you know if if we're if we're being told something that star did not herself witness it's because she's being told it by another character and the movie much like you know these are both YA you know the Hunger Games also did a very similar thing although that one ditched the narration entirely this one keeps some of it which I really appreciate I think they did a really good job in those movies taking the the narration and and turning it in, you know translating it into to cinematic storytelling but i don't think this movie th this is not a story you can tell entirely without narration i i'm aware some people absolutely hate the narration i think it works but the the in the in the book it's only what she learns so if something happens now but she finds out 2 hours later that's when the audience finds out and in the movie we actually see it you know there's there's at least once i don't know if i want to give away how many times but there's at least once in this movie where there's something on tv and it has an impact on multiple characters who are all wa watching it on their individual tvs and yeah in the movie we actually it cuts between the different ones and we see how it has an impact on them and yeah I really appreciate that choice I really think it you know I I really don't have very much negative to say about the book at all but this is one change that I really think made perfect sense now it was directed by George Tillman Jr another person of color and I th I think the only thing I've else I've seen by him is is Men of Honor which I remember thinking was was good not like amazing this movie is amazing and let's see um, that uh, yeah this movie handles race riots much better than Strange Days and Dark Blue movies made by and for white people who don't properly understand race riots and let's see so yeah um, some stuff from the the novel uh, a lot of the best of the book is the fact that Star thinks one thing and says another which is of course difficult for the the movie to capture and yeah I will say Amanda Stenberg does an amazing job you know yeah she's completely convincing and and yeah there's times where you can tell from her face she's thinking something other than what she's saying and let's see yeah and the the book immediately sets up star is one person in garden heights when she's around black people and star uh I feel, crap, I forget. I think she says 2.0, version 2, something like that, when she's at school, the, the white people's school. 
And the yeah, the book starts with her at a party that doesn't fit either of you know, and the the party happens fairly early in the in the movie as well. And it's again for the book, you know <clears throat> yeah, the book the inciting incident happens very, very early. It happens pretty early in the the movie as well, but not quite as you know and it is this thing of just, yeah, books can start with something big and then do world building before it gets to something else big. Where in movies, you know, the, yeah, the moment that you see someone shot, it's, it's kind of difficult for the audience to focus on. There's, there's a certain visceral nature to it, you know. We're not picturing it in our, in our heads based on what we're reading. We're actually seeing a gun drawn and, and someone shot, you know, so I do think that was the, the right choice. I don't think the movie would have had the impact that the, the book has if it tried the, it doesn't quite, anyway, but still. And let's see. And yeah, in, in both book and movie, there's this thing of, you know, being black is cool until there's a struggle. And let's see. Yeah, the, the book mentions multiple shootings. And yeah, um, a lot of that did make it into the movie as well. Really setting up, yeah, this is just, you know, Star was born in a place where sometimes people are shot. Sometimes, you know children witness someone shot right in front of them. And let's see. Yeah, and and in in the book and also somewhat the movie, you know, Star has PTSD flashbacks, nightmares. In in the book it's to both to to both the shooting of Khalil and also the the shooting of uh, uh, um, Amanda when she was wait crap am i do i have that right um now i'm starting to i feel like that name i'll i'll do it real quick um is it um hmm okay i am not seeing a Ah. Okay, I... Crap. Um... Somehow it feels like the wrong name to me, but I don't know if it's insecurity or that I'm remembering that it's not quite right. But, um... Yeah, the... the in the in the book the the friend comes up a lot in you know including in these PTSD flashbacks in the movie there are less of these flashbacks and they tend to focus on Khalil but yeah really well done and yeah um, in the book you know the PTSD she thinks about all the blood there's less blood in the movie because PG-13 but they do the the this thing of you know the lifeless body the yeah the two lifeless bodies that is captured decently well and let's see yeah and and in in both she you know star blames herself judges herself very harshly for how she answers questions feeling like she's betraying the memory of Khalil and her friend and her other friend and that comes up a little in in the movie but again a lot of this is internal yeah internal monologue in the in the book uh, the book and movie are very authentic featuring aspects of african-american culture that even the biggest racist would have to admit are positive if it wasn't about a non-white culture such as how protective african-american parents are of their families but it does also feature aspects that receive a lot of judgment from a number of white people. You know, in the black neighborhood where she lives, shootings are frequent. 
you know, we're told that one of her, in, in the book, that one of her friends didn't want to sleep over because the gunfire scared her. You know, Star just has to live with that, but the other one can, can choose. Expensive shoes matter a lot, even to those who can barely afford them. The book in no way reads like a rose-tinted glasses view of African-American culture while condemning all aspects of white American culture. It's very even-handed and does not suggest that it is good or right for African-American victims of racism, up to and including white cops killing black people, especially ones they personally care about in situations that weren't life or death before the cop got their gun off, to hate all white people. Rather, it simply conveys that that's a very natural reaction to that. It's extremely clear in the book that it definitely wasn't Khalil's fault he got shot. The The movie is doesn't do it quite as well, but, but does largely... Yeah. And let's see. Yeah, in, in both Khalil is checking if Star is okay. That's when he's shot. You know, he's not trying to cause violence he's trying to ensure that yeah that she's okay because a cop is harassing them and let's see yeah and and i yeah when when the cops question star as a witness they do what they can to avoid admitting that a white cop shot a black teenager much less that it was wrong to do but they do try to make him sound guilty of something try to discredit star suggesting she was drunk there was since there was alcohol at the party and during the the shooting star makes sure to memorize the badge number as she was told at age 12 when she was told about the birds and the bees she was also told how to deal with cops and that's actually something the, the movie actually opens with that and I think that was a very powerful way to open it. Some some people really didn't like it, but like it's the movie's told from her point of view. It was a really important you know experience in her life. It affects the entire rest of it. I yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Now the badge number is 115, and from then on, that's how Star's internal monologue refers to him, because ultimately he is a cog in a machine more than an individual, and the number of 115 almost becomes like a ghostly presence. Every so often she thinks about the shooting and always refers to the cop as 115. And right after the shooting, 115 is distraught. Other cops reassure him he did the right thing. They do less to help Star or to respect the dignity of Khalil, who's already dead. Obviously, they can't pretend that he's still a threat. And, yeah, um, one of Star's white friends makes a fried chicken joke to Star and rather than simply apologize becomes really defensive and actually angry at Star more upset at the idea that Star accuses them of racism which Star says she isn't she specifically has a line where she says you can say something racist without being racist but this matters more to this friend she's she doesn't apologize and acknowledge she made a fried chicken joke to the only black girl in the group and we're told that Star does everything she can to not be thought of as the angry black girl in the white school. She doesn't use black slang, even if the white students are, you know, there's a line about, you know, slang makes them cool, but makes me ghetto. And let's see. Yeah, and she doesn't stand up for herself, stuff like that. And this is something that we're in the book. We're basically it it lists off these things, and in the movie it demonstrates them. So you know, very not, good decision there to to have both. You know, the the book gives a lot of examples of the things she's, you know, of her reasoning and such. But I'm pretty sure at least some of the these were not in in the book as well. Now, right, a lot of nuance is added by stuff like Star's Uncle Carlos, who helped take care of her when her father was in prison. Now there's tension between Carlos and her father, Maeve. Carlos sympathizes with Star, also tries to be sympathetic to the police side of things. And Maeve thinks Harry Potter is about gangs and has decent reasoning. 
the book features white characters who are not extremely racist, just ones that don't check their white privilege. And let's see. Yeah, the the book really doesn't paint a picture of African Americans being saints and every white person being a huge racist. It's more nuanced and complex, but then sadly a lot of the white people who hate this movie probably couldn't get past you know, aforementioned white character who refuses to admit, to admit they may have been racist. They had an easier time empathizing with the seemingly racist white person than the African Americans, who are clearly good people just trying to live their lives. Now, the the novel is 444 pages, and it could take roughly seven, almost eight hours to, to read. So it can get into detail and depth that a two-hour film simply cannot. Apparently some people didn't like that this features black Harry Potter fans, but not because of J.K. Rowling's transphobia, which, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly, I don't agree with celebrating anything J.K. Rowling today, but I realize that, you know, that's probably my white privilege speaking. Uh, you know, black people can't... Yeah, there's a lot of, of things that just the way it was made, it doesn't really... It doesn't speak to uh, minorities the way it speaks to us in the majority. So I 100%... And, and as for, you know, I, I'm aware that there is some... So there, there are some people of color who are transphobic and homophobic. Um, uh, hold on, F a foreign man in a foreign land did excellent video. Uh, at, at least one video. I forget if it's if there's more than one talking about that. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think I will be speaking more to that in this video. I think he did. A fantastic job and I really appreciate when members of minorities can hold their own group accountable and let's see yeah um, you know black Harry Potter fans exist it's also in the book written by a young black woman herself a Harry Potter fan it's organic authentic it's not just there to appeal to white people which I think was the complaint but as with so many things they just Right, you know, really, and and we're just supposed to try to figure out what what's even the the problem. But they specify, you know, a black person and Harry Potter. So I'm guessing it's the that that's yeah. Anyway, and let's see, a non-zero amount of negative user reviews don't actually engage with the movie at all. They just briefly express an unwillingness to and irritation at the prospect of even being asked to empathize with a young black person getting shot by a cop even though he wasn't posing a danger at all and just saying stuff like well I wouldn't have done that and, you know I wouldn't have acted the, the way that he did not at all acknowledging that obviously black people have tons of reasons to distrust the police the cop was harassing them white conservative men have had much more intense reactions to much milder harassment including sometimes by cops you know, I, I forget exactly what the circumstance was, but, you know, years ago there was this video where these two white guys that were clearly conservative were literally pointing their weapons directly at a white cop and, like, basically, like, trying to, to assert their masculinity. And the cop was extremely calm. You know, it's the... the Black people are, are shot over literally nothing. And and murdered in general. It's not always with guns. Also, keep in mind, cops work for us, not the other way around. We give them a gun and the badge specifically in return for them being held accountable. It's, you know, in the U.S., almost anyone can get a gun. You only But you only get a badge because supposedly you can be held accountable. It's extremely telling that despite all the times that fatal shootings are covered in a way that's extremely empathetic towards the cop but not to the actual murder victim that these people freak out at these statistically speaking entirely too few retellings of these events with empathy for the victims and let's see 
Right. Uh, some people have chosen to respond to the Black Lives Matter movement with the statement and movement, all lives matter, implying that saying Black Lives Matter means somehow that those are the only lives that matter when it's actually rather that for most of American history, black lives have not mattered. The movement is trying to bring about equality, not supremacy. Don't get me started on the misunderstanding of black supremacy. It is not white supremacy, but African American. All Lives Matter is not a serious movement. It is an attempt to distract people from Black Lives Matter, same as men's right is an attempt to distract from feminism. We men already have rights. White people's lives have mattered for as long as there has even been a distinction between whites and non-whites. It is much bigger. There is an actual problem when it comes to rights from African Americans and for women. Now, I recommend reading reviews from critics and users, first five pages at least, on Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, except the low-rated ones, Top 100 on IMDb, except the low-rated ones. And I will acknowledge, some of the people who love the movie didn't seem to really understand it and actually express racism as they're praising the movie. And some of the people who really, really did not like it, you know, do actually have reasons. They're not all racist. I found one reviewer who gave it like a 6 out of 10 and said they really did the book dirty and I can't really disagree with that. I like the movie better than they did, but that definitely, yeah. And they actually, you know, very nicely, they give a very specific example and I, uh, you know what, I think I will actually just briefly, let's see, so, I th ah, crap. If I can find it real quick, um, but apparently I can't. Crap. Um, yeah, it it was this. It was a character who really helped us better understand Khalil. Now, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending largely fits with what came before. I don't love the ending. Um, I do. I appreciate what it's trying to do. And I will talk about it in detail in the spoiler sections. I, it, I don't think it ruins the movie. Let's go with that. And, and yeah, um, I absolutely recommend reading or listening through the, the book. And... Yeah, so the, the cinematography, there's definitely some handheld, and I really appreciate that it only used it when that made sense. Like, there's definitely, there's maybe two or three scenes at least that have, like, legitimately, like, kind of jittery, you know, handheld, and it's to capture how overwhelming the the situation feels to the people in it you know it's not this constant thing and that brings us to yeah so this was shot in Atlanta Georgia and there's a lot of uh, what's the word? There's there's good... Yeah, it helps add to the authenticity. And, yeah, so the movie is... In total, an hour... Two hours and six and a half minutes without end credits. And two hours and thirteen minutes with... And there's not really, you know, there's there's some great music over the end credits, but there's not otherwise, you know, you don't need to to stay through it. So, yeah, um, the best elements, you know, powerful, relevant movie, the acting, especially Amanda Stenberg, but really everyone does really, really well. You know, I, I had heard, I, I know that... Um, Sabrina Carpenter is is one of the many many young you know let's see she's yeah she's both an actor and a, and a singer you know yeah she she started out with with like Disney stuff and a lot of people can't seem to look past that 
you know, even though, like, Ryan Gosling started out on Disney, I, I'm not sure I've heard any of the misogynists bring that up when they, but anyway, I haven't seen her in, I think this might be the only thing I've seen Sabrina Carpenter in. I thought she did uh, quite well. And, let's see. The, um, yeah, so the, the, something I saw some others criticize, some, some have said that the movie is too preachy. I don't really agree. I feel like it's just pointing out stuff I didn't feel preached to. Some do point out it's preaching to the choir, and that is perhaps, you know, I don't, I don't think, and based on, you know, I based this partially on reviews I read, this did not appear to change that many people's minds who already, like, it's, it's essentially, it's for fence-sitters, and it's for people who already more or less agree, but if you're already very racist, yeah, you know, the, this is not necessarily going to, you know, I really appreciate the authenticity, but a lot of, yeah, you know, there were reviewers that, oh, it's, it's too black, there's too, why are we spending so much time with, with African Americans and, and stuff like that. There was this one person who said, you know, first they state the fact that the scenes where Star is around other black people, there's this vibrant, you know, nature to the colors, whereas when she's, like, in the, in the school, you know, with where, where most of the kids are white, there's this much more toned down, almost kind of sterile, you know, note to it. But this person interpreted that to mean that white people are bad and black people are good, when, no, it's that the protagonist is the point-of-view character. She's black. When she's around white people, she has to, to you know, act white. She's, she's code-switching. That's what it's commenting on. Like, holy crap, just... Yeah, wow. Moving on. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, the thing I was most worried about was that it would feel the need to soften the blow for all the people suffering white fragility. I didn't really feel like it, it did, nor did the, the book. And, uh, you know, most looking forward to was definitely Amanda Stenberg. I thought she was amazing in The Hunger Games, and yeah, she does incredible here. And it's this, like, you know, her character here is much more nuanced. I wasn't worried that she, you know, I, I knew she would be able to live up to that, otherwise they would have hired someone else, obviously. But it was still really great to see. Just fantastic acting. Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and that is actually, yeah. Um, in the Hunger Games, yeah, they did kind of tone down, you know, she's not, she doesn't, come across like a very stereotypically black in that you know and that was probably because the white people making the movie were worried you know Katniss herself is described let's see I think they say olive skin or something like that in in the book they hired Jennifer Lawrence who's very talented to be clear but you know yeah they and and despite this there were still a bunch of people who were like I really cared about Rue in the book, but I didn't know that I was caring about a little black girl, which is legitimately almost kind of impressive because it's 100% clear in the book that she's black. Like, I've, I forget the exact wording, but it's something along the lines of Rue's eyes were as brown as her skin. So, I don't know. I guess maybe they thought that, oh, you know, she's, she's white and her eyes are white, whatever. So the trailers definitely give at least a little bit too much away for this movie, but they do also give you a really good idea of what the movie is like. The cover and poster do not give too much away, and I don't know that I would necessarily say... Yeah, I, um, it's basically that they, they 
it's the same cover as the book, just with Amanda Stenberg instead of this this drawing of of Star from from the book, which you know, they hadn't cast Amanda Stenberg at the time. You know, maybe maybe later editions do that since books do sometimes do that because they're like, please read, please. The written word is extremely important to your life. Read a book. My God. Frank. But yeah. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 97%, which is certified fresh. Of the 227 reviews, only 7 are rotten. The average score is 8.10 out of 10. And 82% audience, uh, you know, based on 2,500 ratings, the average rating 4 out of 5. Consensus, led by a breakout turn from Amanda Stenberg, the hard-hitting The Hate You Give emphatically proves the YA genre has room for more than magic and romance. And on Metacritic, it has an 81, making it a Metacritic must-see. Universal acclaim, 44 critic reviews, 42 of them positive, 2 mixed. And users gave it 6.9 out of 10. And there are, uh, where's that? There we go. 143 user ratings, 106 positive, 25 negative, 12 mixed. And of the 27 reviews, a lot of, yeah, most of them are positive. There's a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's this f kind of fun thing where the this f fact th th this one negative review is like oh you know you know positive reviews are saying the film won't get the attention it deserves and that then they don't actually they don't actually comment on the movie at all. They're only talking about the, the coverage of it. So I don't even know if they disliked the movie and felt more like talking about the coverage. Because they gave it a 0 out of 10. It's possible they're just reviewing the fact that other people like it. And let's see... You know, one... one Mixed Review said, you know, it's not a good movie for black people, especially Black Lives Matter. It's a parade parade of cliches. And I, I can appreciate that point of view. Now, on IMDb, it has a 7.5 out of 10. There are 411 user reviews, or 358 if you hide spoilers. And th yeah, um, I am putting some links in the description box about the movie. And yeah, I rate this an eight out of ten. And I, you know, it's sad to, to say, you know, the movie is now six years old. It's every bit as relevant as it was at the time. And, you know, when she wrote the book and when they were making the movie, that was also, you know, going off several, you know, the... the um, let's see, there is... Yeah, uh, the, the the short story was written by Angie Thomas in college before later being expanded into a, a novel about the police shooting of Oscar Grant in 2009, you know, and yeah, since then, you know, there's been Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, yeah, and let's see. Yeah, and, and Alton Sterling, Philando Castle, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was thankfully, you know, quite well received by the vast majority of, of the people that, that wrote on these various pages, at least. And yeah, um, 
That brings us to the spoiler sections. So, gonna start... Right, so yeah, from here on out, spoilers for everything in the movie. I'm gonna start by going through a lot of stuff chronologically, but I'm not only gonna go chronologically. So, starting with notes taken while watching. So yeah, uh, right after being told how to behave in the... Uh, yeah, when they encounter a, a cop. And, you know, their, their father, Mav, points out, you know... It's not, a, it's not a question of if, it's a matter of when. Maybe I'll be there, maybe I won't. If I'm not there, ask for me. And, you know, he, he talks about the... He, he teaches them the 10-point the ten point, uh, ten point plan, the, the Black Panthers. And, yeah, um, you know, very shortly after, the movie does get into the... You know, there's a lot of positive aspects of this one you know it's not this bleak you know miserable existence there there are a lot of yeah joyous you know sakani means joy there's a lot of joy in the in the book and movie and and yeah i i really appreciate the yeah her parents are her otp i remember being a kid and, and thinking that about my parents um yeah, and the let's see. Yeah, some great world building in the narration and the the montage very early, and let's see. Yeah, and and Star is not going to Taylor Swift, Chris. She's going to Beyonce him, Beyonce him, and let's see. Yeah, and, and Chris, they, they did manage the, the, you know, he's kind of adorable. He's definitely, he's got Riz for days, I think the kids are calling it. But, you know, he can, he's also willing to, to kind of act silly to, to make her smile. And, let's see. Yeah, uh, 13 and a half minutes in we get to the party that the the book opens with and yeah a lot of great details at the the party and yeah once shots are fired they you know Khalil and and her are you know yeah get get in the car and the um, um let's see yeah, you know, talk about Tupac. Really great scene. Really does a nice job setting that up. The the titles, meaning, and yeah, we're you know we find out the the reason that Khalil deals drugs is because his his grandmother is is sick and was fired for being sick. You know which. And that's not, you know, a lot of the, the the stuff in book and movie alike are criticisms of white supremacy. But, you know, America is a white supremacist nation. But this is a criticism of capitalism. This is something that happens to, yeah, people of, of all, you know, regardless of ethnicity. And... So, so yeah, you know, as a communist, always here for criticism of capitalism. And and I appreciate that, you know, before we see him shot, they do humanize him. They tell, you know, there's this thing about, you know, Harry Potter and who gets to be which of the, you know, who's, who's Harry, who's Hermione, and who's Ron. And, yeah, um, great close up when they they kiss and really appreciate the the consent like he leans in he makes it very clear that he wants to to kiss but she closes the the gap between them he's not forcing her and yeah 25 minutes in the cop pulls them over and we have that you know point made about you know how am i supposed to 
get my license if I also have to not move, you know, which, yeah, that is the, the, that is an actual thing. And, yeah, the, the cop freaks out at the idea of being filmed, even though that is, again, that's, that's literally legal. There's, it is legal to film uh, an officer, you know, like, as, if, they're, if they're on duty, why wouldn't it be? We're, again, accountability. You know, obviously, if, if you know, okay, that person is a cop, you can't, like, film them while they're in their house if they're not on duty and and or you don't have reason to believe that they're about to, to do something illegal that should be documented, you know. Then they have the same rights as we all do to not be filmed against our will, but yeah. And let's see, then we have the... Um, yeah, you know, he... He's 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 such a real person. You know, he's like, oh, don't don't mess up my car. You're getting this stuff everywhere, you know. And and yeah, you know, he picks up the the um the hair hairbrush and is shot, even though you know, as you know, Star points out to, to Carlos later, why not just say, you know. Ah, I think it was show, show me your hands or put your hands on the on the car or something like that. You know, he didn't have to. You know, Khalil was turned away from him. You know how how dangerous could he possibly be when he's not? Yeah, and then we have the. Um, yeah, and yeah, um, after shooting Khalil, he then also cuffs Star, who's doing nothing, and who has followed every single thing he said up to that point, with, without fail, you know, even when he demanded that she not film him, even though he, you know, that's, yeah, she's legally allowed to. And and then he tell you know she's she's crying because her you know one of her friends was just shot right in front of her, and he tells her quiet down. And let's see, yeah, he realizes that Khalil did not have a gun, and you know you do see he is actually like distraught at at that, you know not not in a way that's like oh you know this is now about his pain. But you know he is still, yeah. You know that it is a it is a human reaction to to not. You know, of course he's not. He's not happy about it. You know he's not a cartoon character. You know he's not happy that he shot someone who was innocent. And I appreciate. I I was a little worried because of the PG thirteen rating that they were gonna like immediately cut away. And I do think that the book hits harder because it can get very, like, very direct about it. But I do think the movie gets a lot out of you know because it is a very dramatic moment. It's you know if it didn't hit hard enough, then you know the movie just doesn't work. And let's. See. Um, yeah, um, the the sibling dynamic is very very credible. I, you know, like Sakani wants the the bacon's and and I think it's the, the their mother who's like let let Star eat the bacon eat bacon first. You know, and Star gets a little and you know, takes a bite and then Sakani takes it off her plate <laughs> and everyone can help but laugh. That's yeah, that's a very kid brother, you know, like, yeah, just, yeah, um, let's see, and, um, let's see, yeah, the, the, um, um Yeah, uh, I appreciate the, you know, there's the talk about the three years Mav was in prison and how, you know, yeah, you know, the, the decisions he made in, in response. 
and there's the line about you know the the school prides itself on having a lot of diversity this is too much diversity for them which as already mentioned that was sadly yeah some reviewers also thought the movie had too much diversity and let's see yeah I think the was the friend's name Natasha maybe I don't know why I got the name wrong before anyway but yeah you know her wand which again you know very humanizing there's a lot of uh, kids who who like playing Harry Potter you know I I really don't think that it was necessarily added because oh you know Harry Potter that's a white thing there's there's plenty of black I think they're called Potter heads I'm really not I've never been in that fandom even before you know became clear how much of a transphobe in general you know bigot in other ways JK Rowling is but yeah you know it's just it, it's not supposed to say see black people are just like white people it's supposed to say see he was, he was a kid you know th these were kids they were they they had dreams you know they they were they were big fans they they liked playing pretend and yeah i think this is when mav posits you know harry potter's about getting you know and he gets the the title wrong even i know that even i you know that's it's, yeah that's a i i'm not sure if he's doing it on purpose because that would be a very dad joke which again i think dad jokes i believe is like just a I'm certainly black people do dad jokes as well. It's not only white people, but yeah, you know he, yeah, he gets the title very wrong, and she says you're one of the worst to watch Harry Potter with, because all you talk about is how they're about gangs, and it's like you know they're the the yeah, I I'm not gonna be able to get it exactly right, but just yeah, he he really he makes a really good case. And let's see. Yeah, the the funeral is is really compelling, and the, there's the thing about you know he, he looks so wrong. I wasn't ready to see him as a as a mannequin. The dimples are missing. You know, a, again, like dimples. It's it's such a charming little. I from what I recall, the the book hits harder on the the dimples, but at least it, it is brought up here. And let's see. Yeah, um, Ofra is great in in you know. I'm I don't know. Is a Ray? I I don't really know very much else. Uh, let's see what. Oh, that's right. Yes, she nails it as Jessica Drew in Across the Spider Verse. She's so freaking good in that. Um. Yeah, I think these might be the only two things I've seen, but I know I've heard a lot of really positive things about her other work. So, but but yeah, um, you know, really really great character in both. And let's see. Um, right. Um, so. I just, you know, I feel like some of these, some of these websites that allow user reviews, I can appreciate they can't fact check everything. I feel like there needs to be, you know, either fact checking or just like a, a voting thing where you can just go and say, I watched this too, this is inaccurate. Because some of them just make it sound like, oh, you know, it's a movie full of cartoonishly evil white people and you know saint saintly good black people that's not the case for the the movie or the book i've seen a lot of movies where there's like cartoonishly evil white people that you know racists don't have any problem with usually that's when the protagonist is white like avatar has some of the most cartoonishly evil white people that I've ever seen and I think I did hear some people you know criticize that but way way less because they weren't being asked to you know a lot of sadly a lot of white people can only identify with white people 
in in media and yeah if the only you know they watch avatar and they think oh i'm i'm jake sully i'm definitely not all those you know racist white people it's just, yeah and yeah you know it's these are both the book and the movie are about ignorant white people white people who don't check their privilege i you know there's not really because you could easily the the there are several times in the in the movie where you'll briefly see white cops react to black and it's mostly with this kind of like this again do we do we really have to it's it's more like kind of kind of a patronizing like why can't you just behave you know why can't you just follow the rules we laid out they're not like whooping as they're they're you know brutalizing black people they're you know it 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 doesn't give lynch mob it's more like you know wow they really don't understand they really aren't trying to to see it from the the black people's point of view you know th uh, that dang dad did a an excellent video where he talked about you know cops you know and he he used to be a cop cops are encouraged to not live in the same neighborhood as they patrol and yeah that means of course that they end up thinking of you know they they aren't seeing them as people they're seeing them as suspects and let's see um, um, yeah we see Natasha's death and let's see yeah uh, I really appreciate we see the the blog post that the book also has I did not expect them to actually show us Emmett Till I really respect that because it it is like you you see that you know in in the in the book you know because it's all it's all words there's no there's no visuals it describes how you know Emmett Till was was beaten so badly that you couldn't he no longer looked human and that's the truth and you see and and I'm almost 100% certain because I've seen it before. I'm almost 100% certain the image they the the still that they show on the blog post in this movie is in fact Emmett Till, you know. And I I don't think we should ever forget that. I don't think that it should ever be forgotten that that was once considered okay. And there's there are sadly still a lot of people in America today who don't see a problem with that. You know, and it is this thing, you know, that I, I think the book did a, you know, really hit it home. The movie doesn't as much, but yeah, you know, basically Haley sees that and she's like, she's not upset that people did that. She's like, you shouldn't show pictures like that. You know, she thinks that if there's something that awful, you should hide it. You should not. So, so yeah, you know, because she doesn't see herself in Emmett Till, you know, Star does. And let's see. The, um, I think that brings us to um, yeah. Um, we talk about the importance of the grand jury, and yeah, you know, we the there's the thing about you know they're they're ditching school because of the protest. And yeah, again, you know, we see white people, they don't look evil, they just look like, you know, they don't, they, they can't really imagine it happening to them. So, so yeah, you know, they, they just think of it as like, you know, some, some time off school, awesome, you know, and, and again, you could so easily, you could have had, you know, like the, the, you could have had like something where one of them said, you know, oh, good riddance, or, you know, the the if this is what had to happen for us to get time off school, that's fine, or something like that, something really heinous, you know, and and like you know, Haley does say, you know, he was a drug dealer, he would have gotten killed anyway, you know, but the the yeah. It, it could so easily paint them as just, you know, pure evil. 
and and really like I I hate to say it, but honestly, I can imagine years ago I might have. God, I hope I don't still come across as one of the the white people in this movie. You know, I I don't I don't watch this movie and and feel like oh so you know the the movie and and the people who made it just just hate me. No, it's it's just like if you see yourself if you if you watch this movie and you see in one of these white people you feel like you recognize yourself the way you are right now yeah you know maybe maybe work on that you know it's not a movie about it yeah both of these you know by the end you know mav despite early stuff is okay with with chris being you know with star and and yeah let's see the um, Um, and we have the, yeah, really great when, when, you know, she's on TV and they do, you know, they, they blur face and, and, you know, ah, change the, the voice and, and, you know, we see the various reactions uh, to that. Um, in the book, the reason that Chris knew that that was her was because there was a part where they filmed her from the back and she was like walking next to the the interviewer and he basically you know he he doesn't immediately come right out and say it but he implies and she puts together you mean that you reckon you knew that was me because you were looking at my ass you know i i don't a problem with it being in the book, I think it would have been a distraction in the in the movie, you know. So I, I really appreciate that, and and also just the I don't ultimately I think that it was probably to its benefit that they changed this, but in the book, I think it works incredibly well in the book. Basically, like, you know, in the movie, they mention, you know, oh, they're, you know, he brought out a condom. And then, you know, but in the in the book, like, it specifies, no, they were, like, fooling around. They weren't going all, they weren't going the whole way, but they got most of the way there. She just wasn't comfortable with the, the last all. Also, in the book, she specifies, you know, sometimes condoms fail, and I don't want to be pregnant in high school, you know, which... Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just that they they figured so much of America is so obsessed with sex that if you make it too big a part of the movie, they're not going to be able to pay attention to anything else. So they toned that down. I think it's also because of the PG-13. I, th I think it worked really well in, in the book. Ultimately, it might have ended up being... It, it would probably have distracted some people from the importance of the, you know, in, in the book, it's mostly, like, it's authentic, and it's there to help flesh out these, these characters, you know, but, yeah, once you have the, the movie, once you have a movie, and, and you can see, you know, actors' faces, and hear their voices, it does become another thing. And let's see, then we have the, um, right, good scene when they're, when they're saying grace and very tense confrontation with the, the cops and yeah, and they point out, you know, we have a right to record you. And like everyone is recording them, and then the you know these two cops, you know, yeah, they actually stop and and you know leave instead of escalating. And let's see, yeah, you know the the movie has a lot of joy when it isn't ruined by ignorance. And, and we get the, the thing, you know, 
you know, Mav says, you know, you kids and, and you know, your, your mother, you are my reasons to live and, and my reasons to die. And let's see. Um, <clears throat> then we have the... What did I write? Um, right, the, the, yeah, the thing about, um, you know, Chris wants to, to meet, you know, the, yeah, the, I'm, I'm especially looking forward to the next part, and she's like, what next part, you know, because, like, dude, you, you're already in the doghouse for the condom thing, and now you're something, you know, but no, it's, you know, he wants to meet her father, and, you know, they're like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> That's not, you're, you're in for a rude awakening. And, yeah, they, they, you know, they get out of the car, and the, the, I think this is also where, like, in the book, there was a longer conversation about racially charged stuff. I think it works well in the book. I don't know if I, th I think a lot of people would have freaked out if it was in the movie. Would have been like, "Oh, that's that's so racist." I I thought that it was completely fair, but you know, the and and more importantly, you know, I've, I've read that a number of black people felt that it was accurate. But but yeah, um, they they test his black card and this thing about you know food and and at first you know he's he's doing okay but fails and and yeah and Mav thinks he's the driver and she's like trying to, to give him a tip and the the yeah um the, the <laughs> you have a boyfriend you have a white boyfriend he's not my white boyfriend he's my boyfriend he's white and and yeah you know ultimately the the yeah and this is where like in the book you can tell that like he like he's practiced this he's he knows you know the the you know yeah when he introduces himself he's like Christopher and says his last name sir i am dating your daughter and presents his hand for a handshake like clearly he is familiar with the concept that some fathers are super protective of their teenage daughters. And the, let's see, oh, hold on, there we go. Yeah, um, the, um, yeah, uh, the, the, you know he's clearly not super comfortable with it, and and you know the Chris is about to to get you know he's good night and about to kiss Star, and she's about to kiss him, and Mav's like yeah good night, <laughs> which like it's one of those things like yeah he's like I know you're not trying to kiss my daughter right in front of me. You know, and and they're like, you know, we're we're dating. We're always, you know, kissing each other hello and goodbye. It's, you know, yeah, that's and let's see them. Yeah, the there's the thing about you know, I I was worried that I gave a bad I, that I've been a bad example of you know. Let's see. Yeah, said, said a good example of a black man, and she says, no, you didn't. You said a good example of what a man should be. You know, really great. Let's see. And, and yeah, you know, he says, you know, I, I never thought about it, honestly, but I guess saying, duh, is a white thing. <laughs> like, and certainly, yeah, when earlier in the movie, you know, it was I forget exactly what Khalil said, but she right right the the yeah why did why did we park the car because I want to be able to look in your eyes when I'm talking to you, is that bad and and she says not inherently. 
yeah, that's that's pretty white. That's a that's a pretty white way to to be. Yeah. Um, let's see. And yeah, very tense when there's gunfire in the house. And let's see. Um. Right, and yeah, it was at this point in the movie where I thought to myself, you know, there are a lot of movies where a white, one or more white people are victimized by one or more minorities. It's not always black, but minorities. And in those movies, a lot of the time, you know, either the, the white people who are directly or maybe someone who acts on their behalf go out and, and hurt, maybe even kill the, you know, those members of minorities, often others, and the movie treats it as a good thing. You know, it's just, it's, it's justice, you know. And here we have a, a movie where a white person kills a black person, and, you know, it's acknowledged as not being right. But the movie and book don't, like, I, in, in, in reading and in watching, I never for a second felt like the movie is implying you know, maybe maybe they should get revenge, maybe, you know, pound of flesh kind of thing. No, it's it's very clear that what happened was awful. The person who did it shouldn't have done it. But it's just, a, it's about holding him accountable. It's not about, it's, yeah, you know, the, let's see. And there's, a, there's the acknowledgement that, you know, apparently he's getting death threats, which... I, I don't approve of, of, you know, but but it's pretty mild considering that he did kill someone. He, he shot a 16-year-old to death for holding a hairbrush. Now, let's see. Yeah, really great scene when Carlos explains to Star and admits, you know, he wouldn't have shot if it was a white per you know, if it was a white person in a suit driving a Mercedes... I could be a drug dealer, you know, that, that could easily be someone who made a, you know, if you're wealthy, you definitely screwed someone over, or you inherited from someone who screwed someone over, and once you've inherited that money, you know, you could easily spend that to make other people's lives better instead of, you know, buying a super yacht or installing a car elevator. And I didn't even make those up, those are actual things. The, the, let's see, if I hadn't heard, like, a news story where they talked about Super Yacht, and I heard someone say Super Yacht, I might at first think, oh, is that, like, from a, a comic book or something? Like, yeah. Let's see. I guess I haven't, I'm not sure I mentioned, I love comic books, that's not meant as disrespect. Now, then we have the... Yeah, uh, some narration over as she, you know, talks to the the grand jury, and you know, again, there's Khalil's smile, and you have the thing of you know, again, humanizing him, keeping him, you know, the, he's not a statistic, he's not, you know, oh, a drug dealer, it's, you know, the, oh, we're safer for him being dead. He was a human being. He, you know, he smiled, he laughed. There were things that he cared about. And, yeah, um, then Haley says that, that, you know, I guess you still, you haven't gotten over it or something like that. Just, wow. And, and, yeah, they really hash it out. And the, the, yeah, it culminates in this, you know, verbal attack where, you know, basically, like, star pretends like she's a, a cop shouting threatening commands at, you know, yeah, and, and this is not in the book. I think they just felt like that didn't quite have a powerful enough conclusion. I appreciate that they had to, I, I think they probably did have to change something. I don't think they quite made the right choice. Uh, you know, others have already pointed out, it just it goes too far. One one person went as far as saying, you know, it actually made them 
kind of lose sympathy for Star. That wasn't how I felt, but I did feel like I 100% get what they're going for. You know, they're saying Haley simply cannot empathize, and Star is basically forcing her. She's putting her in that situation. Yeah, it just... I, I don't... I suppose maybe if Haley herself had gone further than she already did... Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but the let's see, I, I really appreciate it. in in book and movie alike, they don't end up, you know, going back to being friends. You know, some people just, you know, you can't be friends with everyone. That yeah, in in the book, they also specify, you know, she made a, a reference to, like, because Maya is like Asian and and she you know yeah Haley joked you know in in I want to say it was in middle school she made a joke about like oh you know did you eat a dog for Thanksgiving or something like that and and that's actually a good point because because in the book like star didn't realize at that time that it was bad it was only in you know when when Maya brings it up she's like Oh no! Did I, what did I say? Did I, you know, I might have said, you know, because that is the thing, you know, the fact that you're an ethnic minority doesn't mean you can't be racist. It means, you know, I, I maintain racism again, you know, anti-white racism. You know, sure, there might be some individuals out there, but it's not systemic. It's not at all to the same extent as, you know racism against black people and you know in recent years there's also been a lot of anti-asian you know because trump chose to turn you know covid 19 into race bait when it was like it affects all of us equally it's not you know i, I remember you know lockdowns and, and masks and you know all this stuff it affected all of us equally but yeah, he he kept saying that oh it was it was China who did this. So you had Trump supporters attacking Asian American immigrants who aren't like just if you're if you're in America, if you spot an Asian person in America, there's a pretty decent chance that they do not agree with the Chinese government. You know, that's not but yeah. Anyway, the the yeah, I quite appreciate that in in the book. It's too bad it's not in the movie, but the movie is already like I I if the movie mo was much longer, a lot of people would have checked out before it ended. So I I do appreciate that. But yeah, you know the being a member of an ethnic minority does not mean that you're incapable of racism against other ethnic minorities you know it's not as big of a problem as white supremacist violence against black people which again is systemic but it can still you know like star realizes i might have accidentally hurt my friend's feelings you know and and that again you know yeah haley is is making these racist jokes and you know star is like oh please don't say that even when it's not targeted at her, you know, she didn't in middle school because a lot of us, you know, we're not mature enough in middle school to, to deal with these kinds of things. But, you know, yeah, now in high school, she's like 16, she's, you know, she's willing to acknowledge this is, you know, this is not okay. So, you know, yeah, the, the book is making that this point that it's not, you know, again, it's not about, you know, oh, only black people black people are you know disproportionately targeted by white supremacist state violence but they're not the only people in america who have you know gotten a raw deal so yeah really so much nuance in the book and let's see then we get the um yeah, we're told, you know, Seven was, was beaten, and they get him out of there. 
and yeah, there's a protest because the the cop, you know, 115 was not indicted, and yeah, really, I, I appreciate the weight given to the the megaphone. You know, she says it's it's so heavy, and you know, she, yeah, she you know, really really excellent the the. Um, um, yeah, the the various things that she says there, you know, fantastic. And let's see, yeah, and the cop counts to three. And there's that line about you know, no matter, I think it was no matter how loud we are, we shout, they refuse to hear us. And yeah, she she tosses back the the gas, which is you know really really badass. And and yeah, it does escalate and yeah they have to get milk in their eyes to to help it and it was around this point that I realized Fresh Prince has really not come up very much in in the movie you know in the book it's a very big deal including in the the relationship the between Star and and Chris you know Chris is able to relate more to Star through their their shared love of you know which is also you know that is the show that you know, a number of white people like I, I think I liked it fine when I was like a teenager. I'm not the biggest fan of Will Smith as yeah. There's a pretty significant reason for that. But the let's see. Yeah, and you know, once they're in the the um their dad's store, you know, they, they listen to the, the voicemail and they did really capture it because like in the in in the book that was also really really strong and yeah you know you have the thing about you know I guess we gotta go to Mexico. We know we both know Mexico is not far enough to get away from mom, you know. And let's see. Yeah, and Sikani has has a gun and and you know star steps between Sakani and and the the guns and and yeah and the cops with guns there's a Freudian slip the but but yeah um again really powerful moment and again it is this thing of yeah you know even this this kid is you know hurt by by this and yeah as as a community they're able to get rid of of king and let's see right and she notes you know khalil the name khalil also has a meaning it means friend and yeah she says she doesn't have to be star version 2 and it did, um, yeah. So the ending has gotten some some criticism, and you know some some people outright say you know oh it's like a happy ending. I think certainly it does feel a little bit too much like a happy ending, and it's I think the idea I I believe that what the movie is trying to say with the ending is we gotta you know it's, black people have to focus on what they can do to make things better which is of course you know that is a it's it's basically trying to de-escalate trying to say you know the the these are you know both the book and the movie are very much against violent riots but the yeah it ends up feeling like i mean cuz you know it wasn't really solved as such and yeah i i don't i think i would have preferred if the ending had more because like king was not the root of their problems white supremacy is the root of their problems you know but maybe it was also felt that it's a little too much to lay on teenagers and you know certainly it is a beautiful thought you know if everyone in the community all agree not to fear the you know this this criminal and and stand up together against him you know it's it's that thing of you know together we're strong 
you know, un united we stand, I think is the, the term, you know, and yeah, you know, can't take out every single, you know, so yeah, um, I, I, yeah, it's a slightly mixed bag, I, I think. I don't think that the ending is just absolutely terrible, and I do really appreciate what it was going for. And certainly, I think you know it. I, I think it would have been terrible if it like ended with like I don't know a, a black person killing a white cop, and some of the black people celebrating it or something like that. You know that would have felt really even if it wasn't like all of them celebrating it. I yeah. You know, you really don't need to put that image into the heads of, of racists. And that's why I'm comfortable saying it in this video, because that's that image is already in there. I, let's, if I was making a movie, I would not put that in the movie. But, you know, yeah. The, the, yeah. Bigots imagine the worst about each individual member of the group that they're bigoted against. Unless there is like huge evidence in in to the contrary, but yeah, um, I don't know. I guess maybe if the ending had like there, the, maybe there was a politician who was saying, you know, we have to fight against white supremacist police violence, and you know, the black people got that person elected or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that's enough. Sadly, we know by today that's definitely not enough. But getting rid of, of King, like, you know, at, at the end of the day, the, there's a lot of people like King who would not be doing what they're doing if they could very, like, if there were enough job opportunities, you know. At, at the end of the day, the the book and film do slightly fall into this this stereotype like oh pick yourself up by your bootstraps, you know, yeah that's it's it's too bad, um, but that is it for this video. So let me know in the comments what is your favorite movie that empowers black people. And yeah, next movie I cover in about one week. So catch you then.